Let's take a look at how to create graphics for buttons using Photoshop CC. I have a few different kinds of buttons here. A rectangle, several rounded rectangles, including this pill shape here. So let's take a look at how to create these. These are a series of layers and they're grouped together. I can edit this text if I want to. So these are all gonna be fully editable if I wanna change this to something else. And I can change the stroke and the gradient. If I wanna make the stroke wider, I can do that as well. So the best way to create this kind of shape is to use the shape tool that's down here and we'll select rectangle tool. Then you wanna make sure that you check up here at the top that this is set to shape. Set your fill to whichever color you like. Make sure there's no stroke so you wanna select this swatch with the little slash through it. And then what you wanna do is tap or click and drag out your button here. Now if we wanna go ahead and add a stroke to that or change the color of it, we're gonna go down here in the layers palette and we're gonna click on effects and we're gonna to go to stroke. These are live effects so we can set them and then we can go back and edit them if we want. Now you can set this stroke to be inside the shape or outside the shape. Outside the shape you'll get rounded edges. Inside the shape you'll get nice sharp edges. You can change the color of the stroke if you like. Click on OK. So that's one effect and if we want to edit that effect we just double click on the name of the effect here in the layers palette. Let's go ahead and add a gradient overlay. A gradient overlay is going to be this transition from light to dark. Now we can go ahead and make a custom gradient or we can have the gradient just blend with the color that's underneath and let's do that. Let's set the blend mode to multiply. Multiply is just going to blend it darker with what's underneath. We can reduce the opacity and we can change the scale to make it a little bit sharper. Let's go ahead and turn down the opacity just a little bit more and then let's click on where it says gradient here and you can see that we can edit this gradient. Now what you want to do is you want to click not on the bar itself but underneath it to add a point. So this adds a color. If you want to get rid of it you just drag it down and it goes away. You can also hold alt and drag to drag a copy of that color. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's move it on the other side of the white. And then you can space out the color using these little triangles here however you like. We'll go to OK. Now you get kind of a metallic effect and if you play with the scale you can change the width of that transition. So that will work for the background of our button. We'll click on OK. Now if we want to skew this a little bit, what we want to do is we want to click on the white arrow tool here. If you don't see that white arrow, it may look like this. It's hiding underneath, so you just tap and hold to get that second option. And what you want to do with the white arrow is tap and drag to select this first corner here, and then use your arrow keys on your keyboard while holding shift to just go ahead and nudge. It's going to ask you if you want to turn this live shape into a regular path. Go ahead and click yes. That's okay. Make sure to count how many times you nudge. So I did two nudges there. And I'm going to do two nudges in the opposite direction. Now I get my nice shape there. And if you want to move it around, you can use the move tool here to go ahead and reposition it wherever you like. So we have our first button shape. Let's take a look at how to add text to this now. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I move this rectangle up out of this other group here. And I'm going to put it inside of its own group. Let's call it new button one. And we'll go ahead and click on the rectangle there. That way if we create a new layer, it goes above the rectangle. We'll select the type tool, which is this T here. You can also hit T on your keyboard. And rather than click within this shape here, go ahead and click underneath, just tap. And then you can go ahead and add your text. If it's too small to see, go ahead and increase the type size here and you can change the type color to whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to black. You can also change it right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some type, and then you have to click the check to commit or the cancel button. You wanna click check if you're happy with the text. And then rather than fiddle around with the point size, I like to just go ahead and select the move tool and then hit control T or command T, and that brings up the free transform dialog. You can hover over the corner here and drag now of course it'll squash unless you hold shift. So hold shift while you drag to scale it down. Go ahead and move it into place. Click the check to commit if you're happy with that transformation. And then there you go. Now if we want to line these up, what we want to do is we want to go over here to the layers palette, hold shift so that we've selected the button and the text. And then we'll get some options up here if we have two objects selected. This option here will align things vertically. This will align things horizontally. So basically what that's gonna do is that's just going to center the text inside of the button automatically. It doesn't always get it perfect, so if you think you need to go ahead and nudge it, you can go ahead and do that. 
just select the text and then use the arrow keys to move it up or down by nudging it. Most of the time this centering works pretty well though. Let's go ahead and change the text to white. I think I like that better. You can also change the font, but I'm not too worried about doing fonts in this one. But there are ways to change the italic, bold, regular, and so on. If you're not seeing any of these palettes that I have, all of your palettes are hiding under the window menu. So for instance, there's character to change the font, and there's the layers palette and so on. So let's take a look at how to create the next button with these rounded edges. I'm going to go to the shape tools. And I'm going to select the rounded rectangle. You can change the radius here, but you might want to go ahead and draw first to see what you get. If you don't like the radius, if it's not round enough or it's too round, you'll want to adjust this. So you could just try doubling it. Let's say we'll go to 30 pixels and then we'll draw and we see that we get a more rounded edge. You could think of these edges as being circles in each corner. And so this is the radius of the circle. So a lower number is going to give you less rounding. A higher number is going to give you more rounding. I'm going to go ahead and draw out my button here. And just like you can resize the text, you can resize the buttons by doing Control T. You can go ahead and squash it down like so. Click on the check to commit. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put this button within its own layer. I'm going to take it out of this group that I accidentally put it in by dragging it out of the group. And I'm going to put it in its own group and name it New Button 2. And go ahead and click on that layer. And you'll see if you look in the properties, there are live shape properties. So if you want to change any of these corners to have some corners not be rounded, you can go ahead and do that. And you have access to the stroke and the fill and everything else here. So you can really go in and edit this shape. Let's add some more live effects to this. Let's click on effects and let's go to color overlay so we can change the color. You can sample colors from within your image if you like. You'll have to click on the swatch here first and you'll see you'll get the dropper. So I could sample that color, or I could sample the red color, or the white color, or I could pick my own color if I like. Let's go ahead and pick something close to that green. Let's also add a stroke. Let's increase the size of that stroke. Let's put it inside. And let's pick a green color. Maybe something like that. And let's add some text with the type tool. Just click once. And click on the check to commit. Go ahead and move it into place. Use Control T to scale it down. Hold Shift. If you hold Alt while you're holding Shift, you'll be able to scale this from the center without squishing it. I think that size looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and change the color of that font. I'm going to sample this green border and make it just a little bit darker. We'll go to OK. Let's make the font bold instead of italic. And it needs to be centered a little bit, so I'm going to hold Shift and select the rounded rectangle layer. Click on the vertical and horizontal centers to go ahead and center it. Now, what if you want to align two individual buttons? You want to go ahead and make sure that they're grouped like I have my buttons grouped here. That way I can move each of the buttons around. And then you want to hold shift and select the two buttons that you want to align. And then you want to click the proper alignment up here. So now these are aligned perfectly. Let's take a look at how to do this third kind of button with a little bit of reflection and bevel on it. Let's go ahead and go to the rounded rectangle tool again. Let's change the radius to 15 this time. We'll go ahead and draw our shape. Let's go ahead and add some color to this. Let's add an effect for a gradient overlay. Let's click on the gradient swatch itself and we'll change this black to a dark gray like this. Click on OK. Let's change the scale. And if you want, you can get it even sharper if you click back in the gradient here. You can go ahead and move this white closer to the gray, that'll sharpen it up even more. And next, let's add an inner glow. And let's make that a gray color like this. We'll go ahead and make it a little bit broader. And let's change the blend mode to normal. Go a little bit dimmer on the opacity. That gives it kind of a roundness to it. Let's add a bevel and emboss. You can change the depth. You can change the size and so on. Go ahead and experiment with all of these settings because there's a lot you can change, like the lighting and just about anything. If you don't want the shadows to be so strong, you can reduce the shadows here, as well as the highlights. I'm going to go back over to the gradient overlay, because I think that gray is a little bit too dark. I'm just going to lighten it up. And this is the advantage of doing your buttons this way, is you can always go back in and edit them. Let's also add a drop shadow. And for the drop shadow, you can change the opacity so it's not as dark. You can change the distance to make it pop out more. 
These kind of effects are like a visual cue to get people to click on the buttons. It's really encouraging to click if it pops out and looks like it can be pressed. The size makes the edge a little bit more feathered or less feathered, and the spread just makes it more broad. I think that looks pretty good for our button background. Let's go ahead and just group this, and let's add some text. We can add these live effects to the text as well. I'm gonna go ahead and move the font closer to being in place. Use Control T to enable free transform. Scale it down and change the font to italic. And I'm going to change the color by adding an effect to make it a dark gray. And let's add an outer glow to this text. We'll choose white and we'll increase the size and the spread a little bit to make the edge glow. You can increase the opacity as well. Kind of makes that text look almost carved into the button. Let's click on OK. And let's fit our button a little more snugly to the text. Let's go back to the button shape hit Control T and just go ahead and scale this down so it's a little bit closer to the text. We'll go ahead and select the text and the button and we'll align them vertically and horizontally. Another advantage to using these shape tools is that these remain vector so you can scale them up and down, make them bigger and smaller and they're not going to get distorted or blocky or pixelated or anything like that. They'll always stay nice and crisp on their edges as long as you don't rasterize them. Let's go ahead and align this button with our other buttons. We'll select all three of them by holding shift and just align them centered. You can also move them together and that's kind of nice. Let's create the final button shape which is this pill shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the rounded rectangle tool. Let's do a radius of 50. That way it'll be really rounded. We'll draw out our pill shape. We'll go ahead and change the color of it. We'll add a drop shadow. And we'll go to bevel and emboss. We'll add a bevel. This time let's do an outer bevel. That gives it a really nice effect like it's coming out of the background here. Let's click OK. We go ahead and move that into place. Now in the newest version of Photoshop, you get these smart guides and you'll see this little pink line appears. That's showing that it's going to snap to be centered with all these other buttons. So that's a nice way to align things too. Now we did this reflection one way by using the gradient overlay, but we can also make custom reflections if you want to. So what you'll have to do is go ahead and duplicate your button layer by right clicking on it and choosing duplicate layer. Let's go ahead and name that duplicate overlay. And let's turn off all the effects for that layer. And then let's go ahead and group that overlay layer. And let's call that group overlay. And let's group that group and the button together. And then we'll go ahead and go to that overlay layer. On that overlay layer, let's go ahead and turn on the effects. But let's turn off the bevel, the color overlay, and the drop shadow. And instead, we'll go ahead and put on a gradient overlay. Let's edit the gradient. Let's go ahead and hold Alt to drag over another black swatch. Let's do something like this. Go ahead and click on OK. And click OK once more. Now we can go ahead and reduce the opacity of that layer and we have this shadow. Now you're probably wondering what's the advantage to doing that? Well, since that's on its own layer, we can add the text underneath that. And now that I've added some text, let's go back to the overlay group. And depending on what you have for your blend mode here, that's going to affect the text underneath. Now since this is white text, we'll have to change this to multiply. And now you'll see that this overlay goes over the text, gives it a nice overall shading effect. We can go ahead and edit that, make it lighter or darker. You can edit the gradient if you want to make that broader or thinner. All right, so now we have four different kinds of buttons. Let's take a look at how to distribute these buttons. Let's say you want to spread them out equally. What you do is you select all four of them, and then you want to go to the Move tool, and there's these options for distributing. Let's go ahead and click this one here, Distribute Vertical Centers. And that does a pretty good job of spacing them out. It doesn't always work, so sometimes you just have to do it manually. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this one up by eye. There's also smart guides that kind of tell you the distance between the other objects surrounding it. I think that looks pretty good. You can also group your groups together. So let's group these four buttons into a group. You can also hit Control T to go ahead and scale these up or down as a group. Click on the check to commit. Now let's take a look at how to export these buttons. There is a nice generator feature and an export assets feature, but it's a little complicated to use for this tutorial, so I'll just show you the quick and easy way. What you want to do is go ahead and have your buttons grouped. So I'm going to select, let's say, this first button here. I'm going to select that group. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to choose Duplicate Group. 
I'm going to duplicate that to a new document. The next thing I'm going to do is go to image trim. Just click OK. That's going to trim out the whole background. If you want to resize your button, you can go ahead and make it bigger or smaller if you like using image size or canvas size. If you want to save it, you can go ahead and go to file save for web. That works pretty well for saving buttons to the web. You could choose a size here as well but you want to make sure that you don't enlarge it this way because if you do it's going to get really blurry it's not going to be a vector anymore so if you want to resize this you have to resize it here first go to image image size and then you can see that it scales up and everything remains the same now your effects might change a little bit because this stroke is based on a point size so if you make everything bigger you're going to have to increase the point size of everything to compensate for that and now we have a really big button, and if we go to save that by doing save for web, you can see that it's nice and crisp. Generally speaking, it's better to make your buttons bigger rather than too small. That way, if you shrink them down, it's okay, because shrinking things down isn't going to hurt the image. It's blowing things up after they're already rasterized that gives you that really blurry effect that looks really bad. Now, another handy thing you can do is you can copy and you can paste layer styles. So let's say I want to apply this nice green color and stroke to this how to button on top I'll go to the button number two layer which is this layer here I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and choose copy layer style I'm going to go to the other layer that I want to paste that style on which is layer one and I'm gonna right click on that and I'm going to choose paste layer style now you can see that it changes the color now the text you'll have to do separately of course but I could pretty quickly go ahead and just change that this way here and there you go, you can see that it copied over those properties. Now you can do that on multiple layers as well if you wanted to instantly paste those effects on like 10 or 20 different layers, you could do that. So there you go, that's how you can create editable buttons using Photoshop CC. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.